Hey guys, it's Mr. Ross. Um, we're going to take a little bit of time today and we're going to uh, learn a new way for you to visualize motion. Um, so far we've only learned three different things. First we start off with graphs and then we turn those graphs into equations which are really good to make predictions. And then we also took those graphs and we learned how to just describe them with words. Um, sometimes though, I don't know about you guys, I like to describe things with pictures or pictures just help me a little bit better. So we're going to learn a pictorial method of describing our motion today and that is going to be motion maps. So you're going to need a pencil, you're going to need some paper, we're going to make a couple number lines and I'll teach you how to do this hopefully quickly. Alright, so we're going to learn about motion maps here and again motion maps are going to be a visual way for us to understand the motion of an object. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to pretend that I'm a car for a second, okay? This is my zero point, so this will be my starting point. And then going this way will be positive. Okay, so positive is going in that direction. Hopefully you guys can see that on there. So I'm going to be the car, and I'm going to go at a constant positive velocity, okay? So every time that a second passes, I'm going to put a dot, okay? So Okay. It's kind of hard to see those on there, so I'm going to make them a little bit bigger for you. All right. Now what those dots actually represent is time, okay? I said I was going to make one every second, so now I'm going to label those time, okay? This was time zero. This is time, we'll just say it's one second, time two seconds, time three seconds, time four seconds, and time five seconds out there, okay? All right. We said that this is going to be a way for us to visualize the motion of, an ob motion of an object, sorry. We've got the time part of our motion, and we also figured out that motion also has like a distance aspect, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw arrows that show how far I went in that time. So I went this far in between zero seconds to one second, okay? So again, the time that I'm looking at here, this is a clock reading. This is how far I moved in the time interval in between zero to one second. Okay, so I'm going to put these little arrows in between, and then this one will go way out here. Okay, that's a motion map. The arrow represents how far we go, and the little dots are representing our time. So that was going at a relatively good pace. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit faster and let's see what that looks like. Okay? So now I'm going to do it up here. Okay? So here's my time zero. And I'm going to... Oh! It's hard to keep up with those. So let me redraw those little dots. Okay? There's a dot. There's a dot. There's a dot. And there's a dot. Okay? So this the time one, time two, I know my head's probably almost getting cut off here, time three, time four, okay? Let's compare that real quick. If you look at the first line that I did, it was only five seconds long. But the other one, I did it for four seconds, okay? Let's draw our arrows now on this one. And this one would go way out there. Okay? Here's the difference. Those longer arrows represent a higher velocity because I was going faster. Alright? So, if something is going faster, it's going to have a longer arrow on the uh, motion map. If it's going a little bit slower, it's going to have a shorter arrow. So now let's talk about some other motions. Okay? Let's pretend for a second and I'm just sitting still. All right. Now this time I'm going to give myself a, a positive starting position, so I'm not starting at zero. Again, zero is over here. I'm going to start kind of in the middle this time. Okay. Now I'm a car parked. So every second, just like last time, I'm going to put a dot. 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 So every second I did a dot. Now I have five dots right there. That means I was going for about five seconds. 
my estimation of time might be bad. I know. Okay, so five seconds. This was time zero. This would be time one, time two, time three, time four, and then this is time five seconds. Okay. If you don't go anywhere, okay, you're not going forward, you're not moving in a positive position, you're not moving to a negative position, you're just going to stack these numbers, or these dots, okay? Now let's pretend for a second that I go forward, then I stop, and then I go backwards. So I think this would be like number seven on your guys' homework, okay? So I'm going to start over here. Here's my time zero. I'm going to go forward, stop, and then go backwards. So let me get those dots a little bit more clear for you. So here's what we would do now. We add the arrows, and I was going this way, so I'm going to make my arrows go this way. And then right here, which is clock reading one, two, three, four, okay, so time four seconds, I stopped. So then I started stacking them. From four to five seconds, I was still stopped. Five to six seconds, I was still stopped. Six to seven seconds, still stopped. So this is time six seconds. Or sorry, seven seconds. Four, five, six, seven. Mr. Ross needs to learn how to count. So that's time seven seconds. And then I started going backwards. So let's draw our arrows going backwards now. Okay. Now a couple quick hints. If I'm going the same speed my arrows should be the same length. If I'm going the same direction, my arrows should be pointed in the same direction. If I go a slower speed, I need to have smaller arrows. If I have a bigger speed, my arrows are bigger. Remember, if I stop, I'm going to stack a couple of dots. Now, since you guys have qualitative graphs on your homework, you should probably just guesstimate. It doesn't matter how many, like, if it stops, you can either do it, like, couple dots, two dots, whatever you want, okay? Because it's qualitative, it's not quantitative, meaning no numbers. So the numbers you make up are going to be fine, okay? So what we're going to end up using these motion maps for is we're going to take these motion maps and we might start like a car down here at zero and we might start a car in a positive position and we might run them together. We can use these motion maps eventually to figure out where those cars would hit, okay? Which is actually what we're going to be doing next week. So. I want you guys to try questions one through eight, and then when you get done with them, we'll check them over tomorrow, okay? See you later.